Have you been thinking about making a move to Seattle? Well, in today's video, I'm going over the 15 things you must know if you're gonna move to this area, so stay tuned. What's up you guys, I'm Bryce Greenleaf. I'm a local real estate agent here in the greater Seattle area and I love making videos all about living in this area. Whether you're moving from out of the area or you're already here, I love making videos just describing different places you can live, uh, videos about the local real estate and all about moving to and living in this area. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that little bell to get notified every time that I make a new video. Like I said, I love making videos about this area so I'll be coming out with much more content about the local Seattle area. I love getting calls, texts, and emails from you guys with questions about the local area here. So if you need to, if you're thinking about moving over here and you've got some questions, or you're already living here and you're looking to buy or sell some real estate, make sure you reach out to me here. Uh, my contact info is on the screen. Like I said, you can text me, you can call me, or you can send me an email, or feel free to comment down below on this video with any questions you have or any topics for future videos you want me to cover. But like I said, on today's video, I'm gonna go over the 15 things that you should know about the greater Seattle area before you move over here. So let's jump right into it. All right, so number one is that if you're living right in the city of Seattle, you're gonna have to deal with some of the, the issues that larger cities have to deal with. Now, I'm sure there are many uh, large cities around the country that don't have to deal with some of these problems we do here. And I'm talking about specifically homelessness, uh, drug use, and just the overall lack of cleanliness of the city of Seattle. So. Um, you know, if you're on the West Coast in some of the bigger cities like LA or, or maybe the East Coast in New York, um, even maybe Chicago, I'm sure you're used to this and you've seen this before. Maybe some of the other bigger cities um, in, in Texas or Arizona or wherever maybe don't have to deal with this, um, but this definitely is something that you're gonna encounter if you're in the city of Seattle. There is a lot of drug use going on on the streets in Seattle. Uh, it's not really policed or enforced very much anymore. So it, it's definitely something that you should consider if you're looking to move right into the city of Seattle. Now that brings me to point number two and, and item number two on this list is that there are some great suburbs outside of the city of Seattle that are also very close, that are much more clean uh, and, and just great places to live. So on the east side of Lake Washington, so the city of Seattle is kind of landlocked between the Puget Sound and Lake Washington, which is on the east side. On the other side of that lake, you've got some great cities over there, Bellevue, Kirkland, Redmond, Sammamish, Bothell, Issaquah. There's some amazing places to live on the east side of that lake. You can also go to the north side of Seattle. Uh, you've got places like Briar, Mount Lake Terrace, Linwood, Lake Stevens, Snohomish, even as far as Marysville and Arlington. There are some great places that you can live out there that aren't gonna have the same issues as the downtown city of Seattle are going to have. And of course, this is all about your work and where you're gonna be commuting to work every day. If, if you're gonna be commuting right into downtown Seattle, you don't wanna live all the way up in Arlington um, on the north side of Snohomish County. That's gonna be an insanely difficult commute. Um, but if you're not having to work right in the city of Seattle, then some of those options far up there could be uh, reasonable. Now, if you are working in Seattle, there are some other suburbs closer that you can still live to that the commute won't be all that bad. You know, Mount Lake Terrace, Linwood, on the east side, like I said, Bellevue, Kirkland, um, you're gonna have a commute, but it won't be as bad if, if you're way up north. So definitely lots of great suburbs in this area you can consider. Uh, you don't have to live right in the city of Seattle. This video is really about the Seattle metropolitan area, which covers three different counties. All right, item number three you must know is the food and restaurant scene is amazing here. You have so many different options of type of foods. I mean, you've got the local mom and pop shop, you got the, the chains, the restaurants. You've got amazing seafood here. I mean, we're right on the Puget Sound, so there is an abundance of restaurants that serve just absolutely tasty seafood options. Um, right on the waterfront, you can get a, a table in a restaurant that's overlooking the Puget Sound, overlooking the water, uh, and it's perfect for a date night or, or even brunch or breakfast in the morning. There are a lot of different options, and then you've got, you know, you've got sushi, you've got the Mexican food, you've got Indian cuisines, uh, you've got your traditional American food, anything that you can think of, there will be options over here. And like I said, a lot of different local mom and pop shops that are absolutely delicious. You could eat out every single night for dinner and never run out of spots to eat. So um, I don't know if that's going to be great for your pocketbook, of course, but uh, but there are so many different options if you'd like to eat out. All right, point number four, and I think most people know this, is traffic is absolutely terrible around here. So again, this is heavily dependent on where you live and work. If you work right in the city of Seattle and you're living in a local suburb, 
you're gonna deal with traffic trying to get into Seattle. Like I said, it's so landlocked in there between the Puget Sound and Lake Washington that it gets really, really backed up. Even on the south side of uh, Seattle in Pierce County and the north side in Snohomish County, traffic is still really bad when you're commuting in those rush hour times. So you've really got to factor in where you're working first and then decide where it would be realistic for you to live. Like I said, if, if you're working in downtown Seattle, you don't want to live all the way down south in Tacoma or all the way up north in Arlington. Sure, there are people that do this, but they spend, you know, three hours a day in the car likely just to get to Seattle from these locations. So you really want to figure out what that commute time to your work would be when you're factoring in uh, where you're going to live and where you're going to start house shopping. And when it starts raining or snowing around here, the traffic gets even worse because for some reason people don't know how to drive in the rain or snow around here, even though it rains quite a bit, people should be used to it. But Never ceases to amaze me how much uh, traffic continues to back up even more when it gets wet out. All right, and item number five here is it's coffee shop galore. If you are a coffee connoisseur, this is where you wanna be. Now we've got our Starbucks here. Everybody knows Starbucks was founded in Seattle. They've got the original Starbucks down at Pike Place uh, in Seattle. Outside of that, there are so many great local coffee shops. You've got sit down shops, you've got just walk in shops, you've got drive through espresso stands which is what me and my wife usually do. We drive through the espresso stand on our way out to, to run errands or to work or wherever uh, we're going. There are just so many options that you can try um, and this is the spot to be for you coffee connoisseurs. All right, and item number six is the amount of lakes that we have around here. So if you enjoy hanging out on the water, you take the boat out, the jet skis, you wanna go paddle boarding, you wanna go kayaking, you wanna just go swimming, jumping off a dock, you wanna go fishing. We've got Lake Washington, Lake Sammamish, Lake Stevens, Lake Goodwin. There are just, like I said, an endless amount of lakes around here. Those are just a few of the biggest ones. There are plenty of other smaller lakes that you can go out, spend a sunny summer day on, and really enjoy yourself. It doesn't matter where you live because I guarantee there's gonna be a lake with a very short drive to you because there is so many of them around. All right, item number seven on this list is, now this is for the entire state of Washington, is there's no state income tax. So many of you, if you're coming from California or some other states that have a state income tax, you're gonna be pleasantly relieved when you move to Washington, the greater Seattle area, because you're not gonna have to pay a state income tax. Now, granted our, our sales tax is a bit higher when you compare it to the national average, but you're still gonna save a lot more when you're not having to pay that state income tax. So a huge break for you there, definitely something you wanna consider. All right, point number eight is we have the Puget Sound here. So on the Puget Sound, we've got many different beaches, whether you're talking about Matthews Beach, Alki Beach in Seattle, going up further north to Edmonds Beach or Mukilteo Beach. It's just absolutely beautiful to hang out, play some volleyball in the sand, rent a barbecue and grill, uh, hang out in the water. Uh, go in the water, build sand castles, take the ferry. There's just so much to do and it's just so beautiful to hang out on the beaches here. And like I said, along with the lakes, the beaches have so many different options. You can hike to different beaches like Discovery Park, which I've done many times. You can hike down to a lighthouse right on the water there. An absolute beautiful scenery. A lot of people get you know engagement photos done there and there's just so many different options to take in local scenery on these public beaches. All right, and point number nine is you can be in the Seattle metro area but still have rural living. So when I talk about moving to Seattle in all of my videos, rarely am I specifically talking about the city of Seattle just because we have so many surrounding suburbs here relatively close to Seattle. So if you're looking for something a little bit more rural in terms of, of your living situation, you don't wanna be in a packed city, you wanna have maybe some acreage or just be further out where there's farm animals and all this kind of stuff, there are gonna be lots of options for you. We're talking about cities like Snohomish, Arlington, Sultan, um, parts of Lake Stevens, uh, Duval, Fall City, even parts of Snoqualmie. I mean, there is just a lot of different options for you to move to if you're looking for that more rural living and you don't necessarily need to commute right into Seattle. Some of these locations will be difficult if you're commuting into Seattle on a daily basis for work. But if you just need to go to Seattle periodically or you, or you just don't need to go to Seattle at all where your working is a little bit uh, outside of Seattle, some of these locations should be definitely something you're considering if you're looking for a more rural uh, living lifestyle. All right, and point number 10, here in Seattle, we are very passionate about professional sports. Now, of course, there's a good segment of people that just don't give a rip about professional sports here, but 
A lot of us here are, are extreme fans of our, our professional teams. With the NFL, we have the Seahawks, the 12th man. We are known as being the loudest stadium in the NFL on a consistent basis. You know, we've got the Sounders, our MLS professional soccer team, which again, have a diehard fan base. We've got the Seattle Mariners. We've got a professional hockey team coming here that start up this next season. And then hopefully it sounds like we're getting the NBA back, getting our Supersonics back here in the near future within the next few years, it sounds like. So we've got a, a really great scene here. If you love professional sports and you love to go to games on the weekends or, or a Mariners game during the week, this is a great spot to be because you've got endless options for different sporting events that you can attend. All right, and item number 11 is we've got an unlimited amount of hiking and mountain biking spots. You know, we, we're really close to the mountains here. If you're in Seattle, you can take an hour drive out to uh, the mountains, whether you wanna go over Stevens Pass or Snoqualmie Pass. There's gonna be so many options for you to go hiking and biking and just spend a, a good summer day out there. Spring, fall too, many people go hiking in the winter still. Um, there's a lot of different options to do that. It's hard to find a place that's more beautiful than the state of Washington when it comes to outdoor recreation. Outside of just hiking, you know, you've got plenty of rivers. You can go whitewater river rafting, you can go kayaking, um, you can jump in a canoe, go paddle boarding. There's just an unlimited amount of options for outdoor recreation. Uh, for you to explore around here. All right, and item number 12 is the amount of shopping we have in our area. So if you are somebody that's like my wife that loves to go shopping, hit the clothing stores, this is definitely a good spot for you. So we've got a ton of malls, whether you're living right in Seattle or you're living on the outskirts in a suburb. You know, we've got uh, the Bellevue Town Square, which is just to the east of Seattle on the other side of Lake Washington. Bellevue is one of the largest cities in the state of Washington. You've got Bellevue Town Square there with, um, you've got your regular mall stores who so are talking like the Macy's, the H&M, uh, uh, &M, Zara, The Gap, all that kind of stuff in the mall there. They've also got some higher end stores on the outside of the mall. You're talking Neiman Marcus, Gucci, Armani, um, if you're looking into that higher end fashion and, and looking to spend some extra bucks on some clothing, they've got some higher end options there. You can go down south of Seattle and there's plenty of, there's multiple malls down there, uh, whether it be in Auburn or wherever, or you can go up north uh, to the Linwood area. You can go to the Alderwood Mall, which is another great mall I grew up going to because that's where I grew up in that area. And then if you go even further north, into Lalip just uh, in Marysville. We've got the uh, outlet malls. So you've got uh, the Nike outlet, the Adidas outlet, Gap, um, Carter's for kids. There's a ton of different outlets there at the mall. They've got some great sales depending on the time of year. So we hit that usually a couple of times a year and take advantage of the sales and get some new clothes for the season. So if you love shopping, there's just gonna be an endless amount of options for you. There's not gonna be any stores that you're missing out on because they have everything over here. All right, and point number 13 that you need to know is our rainfall. So a lot of people will tell you that uh, Seattle is the rainiest city in the country and it is not true at all actually. We are not even in the top 10 in annual rainfall. We annually get 31 inches on average uh, every year in rainfall. This isn't even in the top 10 for cities within the United States. Now we do get a little bit on the higher end in terms of the number of days. Uh, we average 155 days a year with rain. I don't believe this is even in the top five either. I think we're in the top 10 for the number of days, but not the top five. So. What you're gonna find is, is we get a decent amount of rainy days, but it's gonna be very drizzly. You're not gonna get a huge downpour. Very rarely are you gonna get a huge downpour of rain on any single day. So it's, it's gonna be you know some more gray, dreary days in the winter, in the fall, in the early spring. Um, so it's not nearly as bad as people make it out to be. I've personally lived in Idaho before, and uh, I grew up in Seattle not being a greatest fan of the weather just because it was gray pretty often. I moved to Idaho and realized I'm dealing with 100 plus degree temperatures in the summer and a bunch of snow and you know 20 degree temperatures in the winter and I just did not like it at all. I would much rather have my, my dreary winters in Seattle with, with a lot of gray and rain, but 40 to 45 degrees. I personally prefer that way more than 20 degrees in snow. Um, so it's not nearly as bad as people make it out to be when it comes to the amount of rain that we get. Now talking of weather, point number 14 is our summers are absolutely beautiful. It's hard to find a, a spot in the country that has more beautiful summers than the Pacific Northwest. 
I mean, you're gonna have June, July, August, you're gonna average temperatures in the 70s. It's not very often gonna get above 80, so it doesn't get very hot. You're gonna have some days and some weeks where maybe it'll be 80, 85, a little bit higher, but definitely not the whole summer. You're on average for those three months, you're gonna be in the low to mid 70s, so it's just absolutely perfect. It's not too cool, it's not too hot. You're gonna have the sun, you're not gonna have very much rain at all in the summer. Very rarely does it rain in the summer here. So it's just gonna be absolutely beautiful and the perfect temperature to go out and enjoy your day to go hiking or go on the lake or go to the Puget Sound or just walk around outside, go to shops, anything you wanna do. Uh, the weather is absolutely perfect here in Seattle and, and it's just absolutely beautiful if you're taking in some of the local scenery here. All right, and the last point on this list, point number 15, is if you're a wine connoisseur, there is a ton of wineries around here. So specifically, we're talking about the city of Woodenville and Woodenville is about 20 miles northeast of Seattle. And there is just, I mean, I, I don't even know how many wineries are in Woodenville, but if you're driving down Woodenville, you're gonna see one every few blocks, it seems like. So if you enjoy going wine tasting and whatnot, this is a good spot for you to be. And it's easy to get to, even if you're right in Seattle or in one, one of the local suburbs, it's pretty centralized. So it's, it's very easy to get to, especially if you're going on a weekend and you're not dealing with rush hour traffic. And there are lots of different options for wineries here uh, in the greater Seattle area. All right, you guys, well, this wraps up my list of the 15 things you must know before moving to the greater Seattle area. Like I said, if you've got any questions on moving over here, or if you're looking to buy uh, real estate in the area here, feel free to reach out to me. My info is here on the screen. You can call, text, or email me or you can shoot me a comment on the bottom of this video. I'd be more than happy to answer any of the questions you have and help you out. Like I said, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell to get notified whenever I make a new video. And if you wouldn't mind giving this video a thumbs up, a like there at the bottom, that really helps me reach more people with this video. And I thank you for watching this one and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.